Good morning. We are so glad you're here. Let's stand. Amen. Isn't being live great? This is so fun. And it definitely brings back the memories of all the fast, upbeat songs. And then I have to go into announcements and I have no wind left. So, <laughs> hey, you guys, I'm so grateful to have you all in here and all of you out there at home. So um, for you guys in here, we just got a couple rules on your mask while you're up sta standing up and singing. Just keep those on. If you're out and walking about, keep them on. But if you're sitting in your seats listening to the message and whatnot, then you can take them off. So definitely... Appreciate that you're bringing them in. Um, so we've got our Connect card. Everybody would have gotten one on their seats that are in here. If you are not here and you're virtual, then you can find those on the YouVersion Bible app. And also Sam emails those out throughout the week so that you have access to it. Has all the notes and everything. And then on the other side of that is the um, things you're interested in and also the next steps that our pastor will talk about during the message. So make sure you're getting connected. You can also connect on Facebook. We've got a cafe. Um, virtual cafe that you can connect with any of your prayer requests can go that way um, you can also call or email to be connected with us as well if you guys are here the connect card drop-offs are in the back as well 
Before I forget, the folks that are in here have these cute little tiny things, and believe it or not, your cracker is in here. We're pretty sure it's just some kind of wood shaving. I'm not sure yet, <laughs> as this is Saw our dust. first time. Sawdust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're home, if you. <laughs> If you guys are at home, we just want to make sure that you're prepared. Um, I know that it's okay to use Cheez-Its. It's been done before, or Crystal Light, whatever it is that you have at home, because we know that Pastor Randy will be coming up and blessing it, whatever it is, as part of the body of Christ. So we make sure that you guys think about doing that um, later on in our service. So um, we do have one really great announcement, and I'm excited. And I can say I'm excited because my son's getting baptized today, and I'm like, woohoo! So cool. It's, it's been a long, yeah, as Pastor John says, long overdue. He's been a Christian for a really long time, and he just was writing, waiting for the right moment, and this is it for him. So um, if any of you, el anybody else is interested in baptism today at 1 o'clock at Eatonbrook, if you're not sure how to get there or need instructions, you can call the church. And sorry, Sam, the church phones get directed to her phone, so it could be ringing <laughs> off the hook today for directions on how to get there. But it is on Tuscarora Road, right on the um, end of Eatonbrook Lake. It's absolutely beautiful. So you bring your own picnic lunch, and we just kind of hang out there in our blankets and lawn chairs and whatnot and uh, let the Holy Spirit move. And we did have one year a complete stranger that just happened to be standing by, um, give her life to Christ and get baptized there. So it's definitely a great movement. And I, I know I'm long-winded all the time, right? Um, I happened to be Facebook group with the Morrisville Community Club, and they announced it on their Facebook page that we are having our baptism there, too. So that was pretty exciting that they did that for us. But I also know we have great music coming up. One of our favorites. <laughs>
salute, a little hand clap right here. God bless you so much for letting us have the opportunity to worship with you. We are so blessed. starts off and it goes like this. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it. But anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name.
Well, good morning, church. How are you doing this morning? I'm fired up because this morning we get into a brand new teaching series. It's called The Hard Teachings of Jesus. And although Jesus isn't harsh, we want to just make sure that we understand that, okay? Jesus is not harsh, but there are times when he asks us to follow him through some hard spots as far as life is concerned. Hard spots as far as hard seasons are concerned. Hard spots and hard places are concerned. He, he asks us to follow him through some hard spots with the idea that through those hard spots, what happens is we get to an insight into ourselves that we might not necessarily have if we hadn't gone through that hard spot. Either insight in about ourselves or actually about him. Today, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you about something that we're all dealing with. Anxiety and worry. Who's not dealing with that? I mean, that's, that's what it's all about, right? This is the day and age of anxiety and worry. And you know, and at one point in time, I have to be honest with you, I embraced this idea of anxiety. I thought it was kind of a good thing. Back in the day, way back in the day, GM, General Motors, actually had this ad campaign in which they said, we sweat the details. Anybody remember that? If you remember that, you are old. <laughs> we sweat the details. What they, what they were trying to do is they were trying to rebrand themselves because they were making rather poor cars up to that point. They made a bunch of lemons up to that point. And what they were trying to do is they were right, trying to reboot, trying to rebrand themselves as being those people who were really all about the details because they really cared about their product. And, you know, there's a portion of me that... that looks at we sweat the details and getting anxious about the details as being something that represented I care. I care about how I do life. I care about the relationships I have. I care about the work that I do. So I kind of embrace this in my 20s and stuff like that. But I'll be honest with you, as I've kind of grown older, I've gotten to the place where I've kind of got to the place where I hate anxiety. I absolutely hate anxiety. I hate what I feel like when I'm anxious. I, anxiety is exhausting, isn't it? And it feels like your, your mind is kind of taken over with all of these thoughts. You know, perhaps you're like me where you're in this place where you're, you're all in as far as life is concerned. You want to do life as best you can, but you also hate the effects of trying to get there, doing everything you possibly can. Um, you know, one of the things that we often say is that if you're a high achiever, we look at high achievers and we go, wow, they can't be anxious. They are so good at so many things. 
But even high achievers are very anxious. Stephen Colbert, anybody know who Stephen Colbert is? Colbert Show? High anxiety. He has an anxiety disorder according to WebMD. Oprah? Anxiety issues. Elon Musk has anxiety disorder. Dude made, founded Tesla. He, he is <laughs> SpaceX, right? He's trying to get to Mars, but he can't handle his anxiety. High achievers aren't immune from anxiety. We all are susceptible to anxiety. Whether you are following Jesus or you're not following Jesus. We're all susceptible. But Jesus said this. He said, Who of you, by worrying, can add one single hour to your life? You know, what we do is we get to the place where we we get uptight over trying to achieve something, but we also get uptight over just the way life goes. So in a world and in a, a place where our culture is all about anxiety, how do we go about being less than anxious, not worrying, not being controlled by anxiety? How do we go about doing that? Today I want to give you three things, three things about how anxiety makes us hate something. But I also want to give you three observations about how when we lean into Jesus, we can overcome the anxiety that wants to overcome us, okay? So you're ready? Three things that we get angry and hate anxiety about. The first one is experiencing it. Anxiety makes me hate experiencing it. I want to avoid it at all all costs. 15 years ago, give or take a year or two, Linda, Jimmy, and I went to Las Vegas for vacation. We wanted to go and blow everything. No, actually, I'm not a gambler. I was in the nursery business. I lost all my money in the plant material, so I didn't have to go to Vegas. I already was a loser, okay? But what I'm, what I'm saying is, is that we went to Vegas and had side trips to L.A. to see my stepbrothers and also to uh, the Grand Canyon and so on and so forth. When we were in Vegas, we stayed at the Stratosphere Hotel. That was the tallest one on the Strip. It's like 1,000 feet or something along those lines. And, of course, my son, who loves heights, wanted to go up to the observation deck. That was all the way up. And Linda wasn't going. Thanks, son. So take a guess who had to go with them. I hate heights. I'll tell you straight up, I hate heights. This had one of those roller coasters that goes out over the side, and you go, there's no way I'm doing that. No way I'm doing that. What really freaked me out is the, the one spot where you could actually, you had a glass panel, you could look down 1,000 feet where your body was going to bounce once the glass broke and you went through. Seriously. I'm going, oh, man, I, I'm going to wet myself any moment <laughs> just thinking about it. I hated that. Absolutely hated that. But you know that acrophobia, and I had to look it up to try to actually figure the fear of heights, acrophobia that I experienced wasn't there to torment me. It was actually there to express to me, you know what, dude? You're not supposed to be a 1,000 feet up in the air floating like you were supposed to. It's actually something that indicates for me or us that we're in danger, right? Jesus was anxious. This was days before. This was in our, in our uh, uh, reading Scripture reading this morning comes from John's Gospel. This is Jesus saying, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was this very reason I came to this hour. So here's Jesus, who is really anxious and uptight. Days before he was to be arrested and and put to death, he embraced the anxiety. He embraced death, to protect us, to protect those people who know they're in danger, spiritually speaking. 
There's like 155,000 people that have died in the last four and a half months from COVID. We live in precarious times as far as our physical. Do you know that you're in precarious times as far as spiritually speaking? There's a way out. Jesus is the way out. That's number one, okay? Number two, anxiety makes me hate myself because I feel weak. I don't know about you, but I I have some lousy self-talk. That one time when I was was wetting myself, looking at the thousand-foot drop that I was about to take, feeling that I was going to take, I knew intellectually that I'm not going to break through that thing, but I'm also looking at it and going, oh, no, no, man, dude, chill. Will you just chill, please? Will you just take it easy? You're not going to break through. I hate myself when I feel weak. Jesus had a time when he was anxious and he felt weak. It was that night that he was arrested. We can see it in Luke's gospel. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond him and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. So, Jesus is clearly in this place where he didn't want to go through the the ordained plan, right? I don't want to die for the whole world. I don't want to die for the sins and and sacrifice myself for the sins of everybody. But he also didn't want to rebel against his father. Jesus was fully God, but he was also fully man. So he he, he had every one of the temptations that we have, including feeling weak. And feeling, feeling extremely anxious. But here's the deal. What did he do? He prayed. He prayed and an angel came and ministered and strengthened him. And here's the, here's the takeaway to this, okay? Jesus, because he felt weak, identifies when we feel weak. All we need to go is, is to him and to pray and say, I need your help. And he's there. That's number two. Number three. Anxiety makes me hate the pain. It makes me hate the pain. Anybody who likes pain, they got issues, as my son would say. They got some serious issues. Nobody likes pain, right? I mean, who likes pain? Come on, come on, line up. I'll I'll take it. Come on right up here and I'll kick you in the head. Anybody feel it? Don't see any takers. Nobody likes pain. Nobody likes discomfort. We like comfort, right? Obviously. But the problem is, is that discomfort is a part of life, right? Just we, we, There's pain involved with life. Pain many times is the motivator. You touch a hot stove, there's only one time you're going to be touching that hot stove. Because of the pain involved with it. And what happens is many times pain is the thing that motivates us to look for something in the way of comfort, right? Jesus, on that night, okay, at the Mount of Olives, when he was praying, he was strengthened. And he was strengthened in order for him that first time. He was strengthened by the angel so that he could go and lean into the discomfort that he was going to have to live by. For the next, what, 24 hours or so? Let's read about it. Luke 22, 44 through 46. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. His sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. He rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, and he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. So here you have Jesus going a very different direction than his disciples. His disciples were in this place where they go, I think the way out of the pain and discomfort and the anxiety that I'm feeling right at this point in time is to take a nap. And Jesus said, I think it is to pray. 
Now, for those of you who know the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say, whose way was better? I think it's fairly obvious Jesus' way is better because all of his disciples beat feet and left town. Jesus overcame the anxiety because he acknowledged that he had it. He overcame the weakness because he acknowledged that he had it. And because he prayed, motivated out of discomfort, there was relief that was brought into his life. Okay. How does it pertain to us? It's obvious that at this day and age, we live in a time when we don't know what's going to happen. I don't know about you, but I like to plan. I can't tell you the number of times I've planned. Pastor Randy and I were talking about this morning. Plans blow up, like all the time. They consistently blow up. So you can't plan. You don't know what the future's going to bring. And so, we don't have control. Those are the two biggies as far as anxiety. When you don't have control and you can't plan, you don't know what the future is, anxiety is all around. But I offer to you, our answer is found in Jesus' anxiety. That's our takeaway. Our next steps are found on the program if you're in person. They're found on... Um, the Facebook page for the church if you're online or you can go to the uh, YouVersion Bible app or you might have even gotten uh, emailed these, uh, these next steps and the, the, the notes in general. I don't know what your next steps might be, but I know you got next steps because I know that anxiety is there and it's real. So why don't you take a moment and try to apply this message. Thanks. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.
Thank you, Pastor John, Pastor Larry, Tori, for those great words. I got to take my glasses off because they're fogging up. Um, anxiety is a real thing. I can guarantee to you, every pastor in the United States this morning is praying to God, how do I keep our church open to serve you and to serve the people? Every pa- I guarantee it, every pastor. God responds to his people and says, we, there's this thing about tithes and offerings. And you don't do it to pay bills, you do it to honor God. And when God is honored, the church is blessed. That answers the pastor's prayers when we are obedient to his will. We have several ways to give, and you know, you know them. We have, uh, you can, the donate button on the, on the internet for the church website. There's um, text to give. There's easy tithe. You can mail your check into the church. You can, there are boxes in the back. There's several ways to do that. So I would encourage you to honor God so that the church can be blessed. And when you have that opportunity, please do that. Now, we're looking at a, a very different um, kind of communion today. This is unique for me. Um, I want to give you some instruction. My elementary teacher training says, don't do something without telling the people how to do it. This is our communion um, system. I'm going to tell you, there's, there's two little sections. There's a, there's a transparent piece that you pull off the top that will give you the cracker. And the second piece you pull off that will give you the juice. So that you know, while I'm, while I'm leading directions and people at home, should have everything ready. So I'm just going to get to the invitation, and when we're ready for this, uh, we can take it together. The invitation is this. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who live in love and peace with your neighbors, and who intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. And humbly kneeling, make your honest confession to Almighty God. And let's, let's pray together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we confess that we have sinned and we are deeply grieved as we remember the wickedness of our past lives. We have sinned against you, your holiness and your love, and we deserve only your indignation and anger. We sincerely repent and we are genuinely sorry for all wrongdoing and every failure to do the things that we should. Our hearts are grieved and we acknowledge that we are hopeless without your grace. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us, cleanse us, give us strength to serve and please you in newness of life and to honor and praise your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now on the night of his betrayal, Jesus took the bread And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord God, we thank you for this day and for the awesome messages we've heard. Bless us this day. Help us to do your will and your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Those at home, thanks for listening in. We'll see you soon. We'll see you next week. I'm going to allow the ushers to dismiss us um, so that we can do this properly. God bless you. We'll see you next time.